All right, Marshall. Yes. Uh, it's great to have you here. Thank uh, you. We're, we're going to talk about a movie that uh, I think, you know, in, in a lot of ways, Utah feels like they own it. But uh, it is a film that, for whatever reason, and maybe we can talk about what those reasons might be, that it has reached generations. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it truly is one of those baseball films that I think uh, most people who have seen baseball films have seen this. Uh, it's kind of was the more modern uh, Bad News Bears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're talking about The Sandlot, <laughs> which is going to be celebrating its 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be doing a couple events here in Salt Lake. They're going to go to the, uh, the Bees baseball game. Yeah, on Friday, August 4th. And then they're going to follow it up with a, a full day of uh, Sandlot events uh, on, on Saturday. Yeah, the, the VIP event will start at 2 p.m., and then general admission will open at four, and of course we gotta wait till it gets dark to show the movie. So it'll go to at least uh, eleven thirty, and before that they'll be doing some other appearances uh, nearby. Now I know you know a lot about Utah film, and you're intimately involved with a lot of Utah film. Is this something that when you talk to people that still comes up this film of oh yeah, when I was a kid I watched that movie or. Is this still a, a film that resonates? Obviously, if they're, I mean, if we're doing these events, it resonates somewhere. There is such a connectivity to this movie, I think, because a lot of people look at the characters and th that, that was me. You know, I did those things when I was a kid. And finally, somebody told the story of what my childhood was like and put it on the screen. And, uh, you know, everybody have variations of it. It'd be like, yeah, we played baseball, but there was no dog. You know, we played baseball, there was no treehouse. But baseball was the common yeah. thread and friendship and a lot of free time in the summer. And for me, it's a very nostalgic thing. Um, but it's kind of a, it's a nice nostalgic. It's, it's, uh, it's actually the same sort of feeling I get when watching a Wes Anderson film, is that you kind mm, of long yeah. for this, this time that maybe didn't really exist exactly as, as, but this is kind of how we wished it existed too. You know, and where, whereas we, we had similar adventures, they don't end up with a Babe Ruth yeah. baseball. Or, you know, I mean, it's just, this, is, this is obviously the one step, the more, you know, Hollywood version of, but I think that that's the, the case that a lot of us who did grow up playing baseball uh, go, okay, yeah, that's my friend Jeremy. Uh, or that's, you know, uh, you know to whoever else. Um, and I think it was such a part of growing up, baseball, and then seeing this movie later on, uh, not too later on, actually, but um, I, I, it's just hard to explain exactly what it, the charm is because, uh, you know, when you talk about the film, it's like, well, yeah, it's very quotable. It's got very lovable actors. Um, it, it, it's made well. Pop, part of pop culture. Yeah, now. and I, mean, I think that's, and I think that's Spalls, it. Killing of course, is right at the top. Yes. But then there are uh, other things, uh, too, you know. Uh, I have to admit, I worry that that uh, current generation doesn't understand what they're missing out on because I, you know baseball is not nearly what it once was. Sports in general, I would I would almost suggest aren't are one to what they once were. You know, uh, well, so it's interesting because I, you know I've been talking to a lot of uh, people that are in their 30s or in their mm -hmm. 40s, and if they somehow have missed showing it to their kids, like they have it but they miss showing to their kids and their kids know nothing about it. And then I get just the reverse. We watch it every day at our house, you know, it's, it's the standard movie that we would, hey, wanna watch a movie? Yeah, The Sandlot. So you get, you get both extremes. Some kids today haven't seen it or aren't aware of what it is. And then you get, you know, the, the, they know every line in the movie, kid, you know. <laughs> and I think that, uh, you know, it, it, as a kid, you connect with films that are about kids as well. Um, and, and I think that's part of the charm and, and as an adult you connect with it because you connected with it mm -hmm. as a kid um, and, and again it's that nostalgia sort of effect well yeah it's so easy to relate to because well, you've got the baseball you've got no adults really present in the movie uh, the, you know Small's mom uh, but, uh, and stepdad occasionally but mostly it's the kids on their, on their own you know and then the pool we all went to the pool in the summer we all, you know, knew about the lifeguard. Oh, let's see who's the lifeguard today. You know, all that kind of stuff. So, all those elements kind of spark memories of your childhood. And if you had a really good childhood, you're going to really connect to that movie and go, "I want this." Is how I can relive it is through a movie like this. Well, and I would suggest even if you didn't have a good childhood, you had some of those good moments. Um, and yes. You can, and you can look back and be like, you know what? Being a kid was rough. 
but when you got me with my friends and we went to the pool, or we had, like you said, if, when we did this stuff and we were yeah. able to escape from whatever else was going on around us. It evokes the good, yeah. the good memories and it kind of gives you the goosebumps when you watch it. Like we watched at our last committee meeting, we watched the very last scene of the Sandlot where the players, they just disappear, you know? And it kind of gives you the goosebumps as you're watching it, you know, about what they went on to become, but it reminds you also of your childhood friends, how they just one by one sort of went different ways and it was never the same after that. Tell me a little bit about what the Saturday event is going to be like. Uh, when you say VIP experience, mm -hmm. what, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, so everything we're doing is on, on the filming location where the Sandlot was filmed in 1992, released in 93. Uh, which makes it the most unique uh, event that the cast uh, is part of. Uh, you know, they travel around to the MLB stadiums and a lot of minor league stadiums, including the, the Bees on Friday night. But with our event, they come home, really, to where they spent uh, the summer of summer of 92. So we invite people to come join them. Uh, I, I'd like to share one experience with you. When we first brought them back in 2000. Uh, they came back in 2013, but in 2018, more of them uh, came than the year before, than five years before. And they, uh, they turned to us, who had brought them to the field, and said, can we have a moment alone? And they just walked out in the field by themselves and relived some memories, and then immediately went to the houses that surround uh, the Sandlot and started talking uh, to the neighbors. And it was, it was really cool to see how they uh, were reliving their days spent there. So we'll start with a VIP event on uh, Saturday, August 5th from two to four. The VIP I think is mostly sold out. We may try to add a, add a few right now. Uh, tickets for that and the general admission can be purchased at eventbrite.com. Sandlot, 30th anniversary. Sandlot on the Sandlot is the, is the event. And then uh, They'll have a little break, and then uh, you know, all while that's going on, we'll have uh, music on the stage. We'll have speakers, people who worked on the movie, some extras that were in the movie, uh, some poli local politicians, you know, talking about how important it is for the state, and um, and then we go into the big Q and A with uh, with all of them, including David Mickey Evans, the writer, director, narrator. He's coming as well, and uh, we'll we'll talk to them about their memories of. Of making the Sandlot. They will sign autographs for general admission for three hours from 5 to 8 p.m. And so between the VIP event and uh, the general admission, there's, they'll be signing for about five hours and doing photo opportunities. And, uh, you know, and we'll show the movie. Yeah, <laughs> and then you'll show the film as things get dark and everyone yeah. can enjoy that together. Uh, you know, I had the, uh, the, the pleasure of working with one of the actors in a completely yeah. different field. Um, but uh, we, we didn't really do a lot. We talked a little bit about it, but because me being from Salt Lake City, you know, he, it was kind of like, yeah, once upon a time I spent a, a summer in Salt Lake City and we kind of did this movie. You may have heard of it. Um, and I already knew what it was because yeah. uh, Grant Gelt is who I'm talking about, but Grant still looks like his character. Uh, they all kind of still look like their character. Like you still see it in them, which is kind of unusual because a lot of times when these guys grow up, they're not... I mean, it's like, oh, really? Was that the, the guy who played that? But uh, these guys, that for whatever reason, that that and it and it is a, a youthful sort of look to them as well. Uh, that kind of permeates, and maybe it's because of the movie and those memories and whatnot. But they're they're a lot of fun. Yeah, and one of the first things I'm going to do because a lot of times kids get confused. They're like, that's that kid is a, that adult now, so they get a little confused. So in my Q and A. One of the first things I'm going to do is have them say their favorite line from the movie, and then they go, "Oh, that guy. Oh, yeah, that's Timmy Timmons. Oh, yeah. that's Tommy Timmons. Oh, that's Bertram." You know, so they can identify a little easier because it's confusing sometimes to the younger ones that see them this age on their at home on their DVD or streaming whatever, and then to see them as adults, kind of like, "Woo, what just happened?" You know. You know, and I think it's fun because I've grown up with a lot of them literally you know in, in a sense um you know i i would have been late teens uh would, or mid teens actually when when the film came out but uh, it's 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 funny because it's one of those films that you you don't you don't really think that everyone's watched but then you find out that everyone's watched it and yeah. everyone has some sort of story to go with it uh, there's never a blank look on somebody's face when you say the sandlot and and that has happened to me before and then I feel like, oh, what do I do now? You know, I'm like, 
and the sandlot this, and the sandlot that, and they're like, what's the sandlot? And I'm like, oh boy. And that happened to me recently in the last few months. Guy went through his whole life not hearing about the sandlot, mm. didn't even know what it was. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so you get that every once in a while, but most of it is just people get very animated and excited to quote the lines and to watch it over and over. Well, I think it's going to be a, a fun event. Um, I know the guys have a good time doing it. Uh, that's why they do it. Um, I think that, you know, there were probably parts of them at some point in their career didn't want to be remembered for this one role as, that they had when they were kids. But I think as time goes on, to be remembered mm -hmm. at all yeah. becomes such a, a, a wonderful thing. And then to be remembered as something that's part of someone's childhood and growing up and, and playing this, this, you know, role in, in all these people's lives, even though you shot the film 30 years ago. I, I, I know that they, they've grown to, to really love the fan base. Oh, yeah. Let, let me uh, just give you an aside for a second uh, about how we, we started doing this. Um, 2013, uh, I was the director of the Utah Film Commission, and... Uh, you know, obviously promoting the fact that the Sandlot was, was filmed in Utah, but we were coming up on the 20th anniversary. And I kind of threw it out there to a few people and said, hey, we should really remember this film and um, give it the props it deserves. And uh, I, I knew that they had, uh, with Field of Dreams, uh, been doing the same thing. They put up a screen, Kevin Costner comes back, um, the ghost players come out of the corn, and, and I'm like, hey, well, we're just here on the west side of Salt Lake. We have our own field of weeds. <laughs> our own field of dreams, you know, and why don't we do something there like they're doing w with that movie? And it kind of all came together with the help of the help of David Mc Mickey Evans and and some of the actors will tell you that that's what started them off on their their touring. This was one of the first events they ever did where they were asked to come back as a group and take pictures with people and sign autographs it was right here and then. It's caught on, it's so popular. They've been to many major league stadiums and many conventions signing autographs and doing photo opportunities, but we can also lay claim to that one of the first events of that kind was also here in, in Utah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share about the event, anything, uh, you know, obviously they're, they're at the, the baseball game the night before, so if you wanna go take in a game, mm -hmm. which everyone probably should take in a game uh, this summer. Yep, um, they will be uh, doing a Q&A there, they'll be doing photo ops at center field. Um, so, uh, there's some pre-signed uh, things they're going to give away. Um, so the bees game will be exciting. You know, it's, uh, I, I believe there's a f some tickets left, but it's mostly mostly sold out, mm. which is great for them. Our event still has tickets left. Did the general admission? Um, the field holds about uh, 1,800 to 2,000 people. It'll be uh, blankets, pillows, and some low back chairs. Uh, ADA, of course, we'll, we have an area for that as well. So they may be taken care of. There'll be food, music, and uh, like I said, a lot of um, speaking from the stage. And I'm going to be hosting it and getting people through to talk about their experiences of the Sandlot from 30 years ago. I think it'll be wonderful, wonderful reminiscences. You'll meet new people who love the same things that you do. Yep. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be great. And I have this for you. Absolutely. It's a commemorative ball. has uh, one of four different logos stamped on it. Uh, it says the Sandlot 30th Utah and the date. So here you go. Nice. Is this something we can get uh, at the, the, the event? Uh, yes. Fantastic. So yeah. If you bought a VIP pass ticket, you'll get one of those automatically. Uh, if you're general admission, those will be available for purchase, and then you can have them sign it. And they're going to be signing in the dugout. It's so cool. We, we're rebuilding the dugout rebuilding the backstop and so they'll be because that was all you know set pieces um, so they'll uh, return to the dugout and that's where they'll do their autographing so good for pictures too fantastic well thank you so much you're welcome thank you